Hey guys, welcome back. Dr. Sean here with Valerie parent Val VPH. <laughs> ValPH, nice. Um, and today we are talking about running, right? It's a beautiful spring has finally gorgeous. sprung. Gorgeous. Um, you know, so Val can walk faster than most people can. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's actually a true statement. True yes, statement. It's true. <laughs> so she is a, uh, she's, a, a, she's an expert running uh, co well, at assessing and correcting and uh, working to improve your running mechanics, uh, prevent injury, and also recover from injury. So yeah. we, I'm super excited. We're gonna actually, we're gonna dive deep into this. So we're actually gonna do a four part series on running. Uh, in early June, there's a run, local run here in Point Claire. Yes. Call, I don't know, it's a, it's a charity run. And so we're, we're involved. There's a few of us that are, that are gonna run. I can't run, I messed my ankle up a few, few weeks ago playing with Dante playing with my dog but um, yeah so we're gonna we're gonna talk we're gonna dive into running uh, today we're gonna keep it very simple it's an intro uh, we're gonna talk about what are we gonna talk about well right away we're gonna talk about basically the light things to focus on when you are outside running so I'm gonna use the word biomechanics which just basically means the way you, you run the way right? you run um, and most people, you know, think, oh, you got to run a certain way, you got to run on the, you know, your mid part of the foot, and that's what's been proven. Um, but really, I mean, what's really important is everyone has a different anatomy, and everyone can find their own way of running. Now, usually what I suggest to clients is to focus on different things, right? So focusing on, I mean, first thing I tell them is to run as light as a feather. Um, awesome. So however that means you land on your feet, well, I, we start with that. So light of this, when I think of light as a feather, I use this analogy all the time with some of my patients, but I, I use the contrasting styles in tennis of Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal. Okay, mm -hmm. Nadal's young, younger than Federer. I mean, he's coming up there in age now for tennis, but he moves like a bull in a china shop. And yeah. he's had so many injuries. He's had knee injuries, shoulder injuries, right? Because he literally pounds the pavement. And you watch the way he moves. You know, he's athletic, bang, 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 bang. But guess what? He's had knee, like he's had to take time off. Whereas Federer, what is he? He moves it's like, smooth. he's beautiful. Watch his movement. It's like, it's incredible. And he's late 30s, still playing, almost at the top of his game. Makes makes it to the, you know, Grand Slam, semifinals, every time, year after year, wins. It's beautiful. Watch those contrasting styles. So if you think about light as a feather, that's an amazing analogy, right? You can see someone who moves like a ballerina, yeah, right, and he's efficient, he's effortless, and you see someone that moves like a bull in a china shop. So that's. But the other thing is, if you're looking to also change, like let's say you feel like you're not as light as a feather, right? Um, the way we move uh, can be a big contrast for your body as well, right? So. If you're trying to run as light as a feather, and most of us, I mean, when I started to do it, I can, I barely could hold up, what, like a couple of minutes max, if not like one, um, because it changes the way you're landing. It changes what muscle activations are happening. Um, so, and you also don't want to do too much of a big contrast too soon, because that might be too much of a huge impact on your body. So what I always suggest is focusing on that kind of stuff, maybe within the first Big Max first K first kilometer of your run. Um, I mean, you can do it the first minute if you want. So to focus awesome. on the first minute if you want, and then fall. You can always fall back into your you know normal routine, and then slowly build your tolerance up to what feels comfortable for you. That's amazing. So you suggest you suggest just kind of peppering in some some technique changes. Right? Yes. So the first technique, run run as light as a feather. Run as light as a feather. So yeah. if you're already running, then like Val said, start trying that within the initial stages of your of your run and then you can go back to your kind of your you know your yeah your, your form. or we get tired and you know fall back into our other um habits which is which is fine right habit changing doesn't come from day one and day two it takes it's a long process yeah and it's a skill right one of the things we talk about running with our patients is is running is a skill Right, the same way you would you would learn how to do a deadlift, you would set up for a proper position, and you you'd engage the right muscles. Right, well, running's a skill. Most of us think, oh no, I'm just going to go out for a run, but we <laughs> need to practice running. Right, yeah, running actually changes. This is crazy. Running changes for us. When we're kids, we run beautifully, but then from grade one on, when we start sitting in desks, right, we start sitting, we start becoming way more sedentary. Yeah we start to adapt to our environment, we start to change. So we get short, tight hip flexors, we get like weak inactive glutes. And then we run like 
quads, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you run all over the place. You're, you're, we're... And the other thing is, I mean, we learn to run at a really young age. And in North America, right, we're suited up with some really thick shoes. And when you learn to run as a kid with really thick shoes, it's really easy to land on your heels. And that's the way you were you self-taught yourself how to run, right? So um, that's why it's not a, always a good idea to say, this is the way you should land. This is the way you should do something. You gotta find your own groove that works for you. Yeah. Um, another thing I really, I tell people to focus on is um, shorter strides, awesome. right? Yeah. Um, shorter strides, I mean, okay, there's numbers you can look at and work around, right? Some people say around 170 steps per minute. That's a lot. If you're not used to do 100 step, 170 steps per minute, We'll start by first calculating how many steps you do and then working your way out to something that feels comfortable for you. I mean, I read a book recently and they even said 150 to 170 and some people suggest over 170. It's, you got to work that, towards something. That's, yeah, that's, okay. 170 or 150 steps per minute. You got to awesome. slowly work on to something. You can't make that giant leap because <laughs> then you can get injuries too. And I mean, it sort so, of beats the purpose. So correct me if I'm wrong, but shorter steps will also mean oh, yes. lighter, yes. right? Will mean yeah. lighter on your feet and will mean... More, more steps. More steps, cool. More steps, right? yeah. So shorter steps, yeah. more steps, lighter on your feet. Awesome. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, that's amazing. So what else, what else uh, can we... Well, I mean, the other thing you want to focus on is not bouncing up and down, right? That can also in, in, uh, augment or... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Increase, the increase the stress, so the stress and strain. Right? Exactly, increase the stress on your body. Um, I mean, if we go into technicals... Yeah, well, let's, let's keep it basic. We yeah. We're going to make this a four-part series of running because it's so beautiful out there. Uh, running is, is free to everyone, right? Running easy should be easy to do. Easy to do. You Lace can get a, up, go you, outside. Yeah, it's good for the mind. It's good for the body. It's good yeah. for the lungs. So running is an amazing, amazing tool that we have. That everyone has right at their doorstep. So... We want to make sure that you guys are running safe. We want to make sure that you guys are running often. We want to make sure that you guys are running for a long time, right? So uh, let's recap. We talked about biomechanics today. So simple yeah. things that you guys can implement immediately into your running routine would be, let's go for them, the three things we talked about. The first thing was, oh yeah, um, light, light as a feather. Light as a feather. <laughs> light as a feather, so super light. Um, second thing would be your uh, a stride length. So short strides and many strides. Many strides. What was the 150 to 170 beats yeah. per minute approximately? Approximately. Yeah. I mean, just calculate initially and then slowly go to it. Oh, we have a, a we have a question by Jen saying, should I stretch before my run? Um, no. <laughs> uh, if you want to do a long stretching period, you might want to do it after. You can definitely warm up before you run. Yeah. So think about the movements you do when you run, right? So awesome. you, you have some hip flexion, some hip extension, some knee bending, knee extension, uh, ankles. So you want to get... you. The whole goal to, to uh, get a warm up is to get your joints, get your muscle, get your blood flowing, get all that ready for the activity you're about to do. Priming the pump. Right? Yes. And then, I mean, stretching is great to gain some flexibility where you're missing some. And that stretching can happen either either after, sorry, uh, either during. You can or, do some light stretching even before yeah. as long as uh, you're not doing a very powerful workout after. Because the more you stretch, you actually, it's been proven that it decreases, it can decrease your power. But depends to what extent you're running, if you're running with intensity versus if you're going for a stroll, right? So yeah, so warm up, right? You want to ramp up. You want to you want to build up to then run. So you want to. I usually analogy if you had a car, right? It's an old car and it's sitting in the garage and it's minus forty out. Well, you would never want to fire up the car and then hop on the highway, right? You'd probably leave leave the transmission behind. You want to mm -hmm. let the car warm up, and uh, and once it warms up, then you can then you can take it through its gears, right? So yeah, it's so important. Thank you. That's a great question, Jen. Jen is actually a very, very experienced runner. <laughs> she runs a lot. <laughs> so I think that was a, a loaded question because uh, I'm pretty sure Jen knows the answer to that one. But thank you very much for Jen. Thank you very much, Jen, for your question. That's awesome. Um, yeah, uh, so yeah. we're, we're going to, like I said, today is going to be a short and sweet one. Um, we wanted to talk about uh, getting you guys out running, making sure you're doing Just, it injury free, yeah. preventing injuries. So oftentimes, actually, uh, what Val was saying is running is individual. Right, so running is so each person has their limitations. Each person has their strengths. Their own each person has their anatomy, own, right? Their anatomy, their physiology, their biomechanics. So it helps. It honestly helps to to work with someone 
uh, to, to help you run better and to help you prevent injury because I think there's a crazy statistic. 70% of the people who start running within the year get injured. So that's mm. a lot, 70%, right? And a lot of it has to do with the way we run and our body types. And so working on your skill, uh, acknowledging where you're tight, acknowledging yeah. your limitations. We're doing too much too fast too, right? Yes. We get really excited and we go running every day. Your so, body's not ready for that. So work with someone, work with us, work with coaches. There's some amazing coaches yeah. here on the West Island. We had an amazing one two weeks ago in Mark Tosquez, mm -hmm. right? You should see this guy run. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. So um, yeah, Val, you have anything to add? No, I mean, stay tuned in and we will elaborate. Yeah, next week we'll elaborate. be back. Next week we'll be back. We're going to keep this going. We're going to talk maybe about some common running injuries, yeah. how to prevent them, what to do uh, you know, post-injury post, post injury as well, how to return to, to run, all sorts of things. We got we have the uh, Point Claire run is June 17th, I think. 17th in Point Claire Village. So, yeah, we're super excited about that run. I'd love to be doing it. I can't. So I can't uh, have any bets with who... who who would win? I'm sure Val would, would, would win for sure. No, I just got started with my training. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Yeah, sounds good. Enjoy awesome. the weekend. Have a great weekend. Have a great long weekend. Go for a run. <laughs>